Welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and we are talking about the new commanders coming out from March of the Machine, and there is a bunch of them already. We, I don't know if they just typically unload all the legendary creatures early to get all the uh, commander players excited. I imagine that has a lot to do with it. Gets all the uh, Gives all the content creators a lot to talk about, for sure. We got a bunch already. I don't know how many there are going to be in this set, but I'm going to talk about five more today. And we're going to start out with the new Atali. And of course, everyone loves the original Atali. It was a really popular commander when it first came out. And people still use it in the 99 a lot because it does have a great ability. This one, Atali Primal Conqueror, 5 red red. That is an expensive commander, 7 mana, even more expensive than the original. So I imagine it's going to be doing even more than the original. Elder Dinosaur, of course, 7-7 seven, seven with Trample. That's a big boy. When Atali Primal Conqueror enters the battlefield, each player exiles a card from the top of their library until they exile a non-land card. So maybe better than the original one, right? Because you're not getting lands here. You may cast any number of spells from among the non-land cards exiled this way without paying their mana costs. So obviously the land cards are just going to get exiled and stay there. Very similar to the original one, obviously. It's an enter the battlefield though, which is better, which means you, you know, obviously when you're building that original Atali, attacking is incredibly important. So you got lots of haste enablers, so you can use that ability right away. Here you don't have to worry about that. And again... We can just do the blinking thing. We don't even have to attack here. You can just throw a Conjurer's Closet in here and just be blinking your commander over and over and over again to get free value. Although your commander is a big boy, so attacking with it is certainly not an issue. Also has a very interesting ability here. That is green, right? That's really the most important part here. Nine <laughs> and a Phyrexian green mana. So of course, because we have that Phyrexian green mana, that means in the commander format, this is actually a gruel commander and you're going to pay that 10 mana but likely you're only going to play the nine and transform Atali activate only as a sorcery and on the back Atali primal sickness so this is going to be like the color identity of this card is red and green right so this is now a red green creature Phyrexian elder dinosaur 11 11 trample indestructible who boy no wonder that ability costs so much uh, whenever Atali Primal Sickness deals combat damage to a player, they get that many poison counters. Oh my goodness. A player with 10 or more poison counters loses the game, of course. Oh boy. This is a... I mean, this is a Blightsteel Colossus, right? Wow. Okay, I have to... <laughs> this is why I like to do these these videos sort of on the fly like this. Wow, your, your commander is a Blightsteel Colossus on the back. Um, that's a big deal. That is a big deal. Uh, obviously, transforming it costs 9 mana, but 9 mana is a lot less than an actual Blightsteel Colossus. Wow, your commander is a Blightsteel Colossus on the back. That is incredible. And obviously, the front side, you can just sit there getting lots of value off of that. I mean, 7 mana is a lot. Sure, 7 mana is a lot. So it's going to take you a little while to get it out and get going. You're in green, though, so you're not having the issue with a mono red deck where it's going to take you a while to get going. You can just ramp like crazy for the first three or four turns, get some nice value off of your commander. I mean, I'm wondering how people are going to build this deck. You could build the deck where I'm just using that first ability because that first ability is great. Just exiling cards, casting stuff for free. People love that kind of stuff. And you can just continue to do so. Um, the interesting thing here is... I can, again, the Conjurer's Closet is so fantastic here because what you can do is you can transform it, right? One shot, so so you see an opponent who has, you know, they're wide open, right? You're, you're able to kill them, you have the mana, you transform your commander into the Blightsteel Colossus, then you kill that guy, and then on your end step, you can then Conjurer's Closet, blink your commander, it'll come back into play on the front side, and then you get that ETB again, and you get to cast a bunch of stuff for free. Oh boy, this is a powerful commander, and again, given the fact that Itali was, uh, people just love that commander and what it's doing, now we have sort of the same thing, but your commander's also a Blightsteel Colossus on the back. Oh man, yeah, I think a lot of people are going to be going after this one for sure, no question. 
All right, moving on. Pelucranos Reborn. So we have another Pelucranos. Uh, a lot of commanders. I would imagine with all the legendary creatures we're getting in this set, it seems like most of them, there's not a lot of actual new ones. A lot of them are either the pairings that we've seen before, obviously, those, those legendary creatures we've seen before, or it's a new iteration of a commander that we already have. Green, green, green. So only three green mana. That's actually fairly inexpensive. It's a Hydra, of course, 4-5 has reach and has a white ability. So now again, we have a two-color commander here. This is going to be a Selesnia commander. And again, kind of expensive, six and, you know, the white Phryxian mana, which means technically seven, but I imagine no one's ever going to pay that. They're going to pay the two life, so it's only six, and you're going to transform it. So the front side's doing... By the way, again, with the power creep, this is a three mana, four, five with reach. Holy man, the power creep's just getting out of hand here, isn't it? Um, so you're probably going to want to transform this, right? As you know, if you're building around this commander, the front side, I don't think we're doing anything there. Likely the back side is what we're going to be building around. Let's see what it does. And it is Pelucranos Engine of Ruin. Again, it's a white green card, right? That's the color identity of this card here. Reach, lifelink, and a 6-6. Six, six. So our commander now has lifelink. So any of the life gain stuff will work here, right? Very easy to throw a Well of Lost Dreams in this deck. So I can attack, gain a bunch of life, draw a bunch of cards, right? Any of that, if you gain life kind of stuff is going to work great here. Just gaining life in general is pretty good in a commander game, I think. Whenever Pelucranos, Engine of Ruin, or another non-token Hydra you control dies. So we're in Hydra Tribal here. Create a 3-3 green and white Phryxian Hydra creature token with reach and a 3-3 green and white Phryxian Hydra... Oh, wow, with lifelink. Um, so we're doing the uh, worm coil engine thing here, right? Sort of. We sort of have the... And I guess looking at the art, again, that's sort of what they're going after here is I have now it's Hydra worm coil engine sort of situation where... Whenever Pelucranos, Engine of Ruin, or another non-token. So if your commander dies, you now get that 3-3 three, three replacement with Reach and one with Lifelink, which is great. Anytime you have a, a trigger on your commander that when it dies, you get some value out of it. I really like that a lot because now it's like, okay, my commander died. That kind of sucks, but I'm getting something out of it. So that's nice. And then also it's all your other Hydras as well. So that's really interesting. And what's really interesting here... I mean, first of all, you're doing the token thing. And of course, Selesnia is the best colors for token creation. There's lots of support, the parallel lives and, you know, the anointed processions. And of course, the, the brand new white commander there, Mondrak, right, will fit in here as well. Any, any token creation stuff, there's lots. Populate, tons and tons of support in that theme for white and green. But the really interesting thing here is... Um, and again, just off the top of my head, if I have a Hydra, right, because a lot of Hydras have an X casting cost and they will be a zero, zero. So if you have a Hydra that is a zero, zero with an X casting cost, if it's like one green and an X and I cast it, of course, if I cast it for one, if the X is zero, now it's not going to have any counters on it. Right. And of course, when it enters the battlefield, it will immediately die. Right. So I can just very easily cast a Hydra for X is zero, it enters the battlefield, dies, and I get a two, three, three tokens off of it, right? That might even be the best way to go with this deck because, again, I'll put up some examples here. I don't know how many there are where you can do this, but it seems really, really good for me to be able to cast a, a creature for one mana or maybe two mana, have it immediately die, and then get those tokens. That seems really good, right? I mean, if I can cast a Hydra for one mana and, and not pay the X at all and it immediately dies, and then I get, like, I'm essentially getting one mana for a 3-3 three, three, um, Phryxian Hydra with Reach and a 3-3 three, three Phryxian Hydra with Lifelink. That seems really good. Again, it's, you know, six mana to flip it over, but again, you're in green, so that's not going to be hard to get to. Like, that's probably the best way to go here is... You know, I just want my I want my hydras to die because every time they die, I'm getting two tokens off of them. That seems really good. Wow. Okay, moving on. And we got a new Elish Norn. And it's funny because we just got a new Elish Norn in the last set. And now we have another one already. And we've already seen the new Jin Gitaxius, which is 
I think, absurdly busted. And, you know, the Praetors usually are pretty darn good. The last Elish Norn was really, really good. I imagine they're not going to be slouching on this one at all. So I guess we're getting a new Praetor of all of them, the, the original anyway. The original five Praetors, we might be getting a new iteration of all of them in this set. So another new Elish Norn, two white, white Frixian Praetor with Vigilance, three, five. Whenever a source an opponent controls deals damage to you or a permanent you control, that source's controller loses two life unless they pay one. Well, that's pretty good. And this is a source. And I talk about this, you know, with a card like Dissipation Field. Um, that's a card that used to get played a lot more in the commander format. Doesn't see as much play anymore. That's a, a source an opponent controls, right? And what can happen, and I've had this happen in a game where uh, my opponent was playing a Perforos deck, right? And that, of course, there are creatures entering the battlefield and it's dealing two damage to you. That's a source your opponent controls that's dealing damage to you. And your Dissipation Field, every time they trigger their Perforos, will bounce it back to their hand. So it completely hoses a Perforos deck. The same is here. Now, of course, they're, you know, it doesn't completely hose a Perforos deck because they're just losing two life and they can pay the one, but really it does. It, it completely hoses a Perforos deck. It probably hoses a lot of decks. I mean, people aren't going to be wanting to pay the one, right? We see this with cards all the time, like Smothering Tithe or, or Ristic Study, right? People don't want to pay the mana. It seems really easy. Oh, I just have to pay one. No big deal. People don't want to. People want to use their mana to cast spells, right? That's why Ghostly Prison is such a fantastic card in the commander format because people don't want to pay two to attack you. They want to use their mana to cast stuff. So they're not going to want to do this. So I would say it's likely that people aren't going to pay the one. They're just going to lose two life. So that's a pretty good ability all on its own. Another thing you could do here is you could do a little bit of a Staxi theme where you're tapping down your opponent's land so that they can't pay I don't know if people are going to do that. Obviously, there's a lot more going on in this card, which we have to cover. Pay two and a white and sacrifice three other creatures. Exile Elish Norn, then return it to the battlefield, transformed under its owner's control. Activate only as a sorcery. So sacrifice three other creatures. That's a lot, right? That That's a lot. Also, you are exiling it and then returning to the battlefield. That is important wording there. Sometimes it can make a difference. You're obviously going to need Sack Fodder in this deck. Uh, you know, is that going to play into the other ability, right? The Transform. Is, is the Sacrifice theme going to play into it at all here? But let's see what the back is looking at. And of course, it's a saga just like the Jin Kataxius version is. And I imagine, again, they're all going to be like that. We're probably going to see all the Praetors and they're all going to be Transform and a saga on the back. So chapter one incubate two five times <laughs> and transform all incubator tokens you control incubate two five times <laughs> i mean come on that's kind of funny how they worded that now obviously what they mean because i'm already familiar with the incubate ability this means incubate two five times now i think they should maybe i don't know it's just the way they worded this is very weird so you're going to incubate two which means you're going to uh you know you put those incubate tokens in play and then you can transform them and you know because you're incubating two i think that means there's two plus one plus one counters here so you're gonna when you transform that creature it now becomes a a two two artifact creature right that's what it's going to be. It's going to it's going to be a I guess essentially a OO artifact creature with two plus one plus one counters on it. The wording there is just anyway. Um, chapter two: Creatures you control get plus one plus one and gain double strike until end of turn. That's pretty good. Um, so you know, go white strategy. I think we are in here. So that I guess kind of fits the sacrifice theme. Let's see what the chapter three is. I, the chapter three on the Jin Kataxius was bananas. Let's see what it is here. Destroy all other permanents except for artifacts and lands and Phyrixians. Exile the Argent etchings, then return it to the battlefield. So again, unlike other sagas where when they get to chapter three, they sacrifice themselves. Here, you're not doing that, right? You're going to flip it back over so you can use the other side again and obviously then flip it over again if you want to. So destroy all other permanents except artifacts, lands, and Phyrixians. So obviously Phyrixian creatures were, were going to be referring to here so i guess you probably want to put Frixian creatures in the deck this could get really confused again talking about more confusion um a lot of creatures have been errated to be Frixian now there's a lot of older creatures that have probably been in the game for a long long time way back to when the whole Frixian thing first came in which i believe was tempest block and we're gonna see you know there's gonna be you're gonna have to be looking on your phone 
Is that creature Phyrexian? Right, you're gonna have to, and there is a lot of Phyrexian stuff in this set. So that's probably already gonna be an issue, but might be some confusion here. I would imagine there'd be a lot of situations where someone actually does have a Phyrexian creature on the battlefield, but they don't know it is because they don't have the updated errated version and they're gonna send it to the graveyard. Um, anyway, destroy all other permanents except for the, uh, art so artifacts and lands are gonna stick around and the Phyrexian creatures. So you're mostly gonna be destroying enchantments and the non-Phyrexian creatures, obviously. You're gonna be destroying planeswalkers as well. So that's not bad. Pretty interesting. I mean, it's it's pretty powerful. It's not like mind blowing. I don't think like the Jin Cataxius. The double strike's pretty good. I would say this probably isn't nearly as good as the Jin Cataxius, and probably isn't even as good as the last Elish Norn or even the original Elish Norn. You know, this one's not super busted at all. I, I think it's I, I'm pretty okay with this. I think. All right, moving on to another new Glissa, and again, we just got a Glissa. Now we're getting another one. Herald of Predation, and it's a another black-green version. So three black and a green. Phyrexian Zombie Elf 3-5. At the beginning of combat on your turn, choose one. So I like the at the beginning of combat trigger because we're going to get it immediately when we cast our commander on our first main phase. We get this trigger right away, and it's modal. And I love modal effects. Uh, modal triggers are particularly good. Of course, the last Glissa also had that. Incubate two twice again with that weird wording to incubate two so now we're actually going to see what it does i'm pretty sure i got it correct but to incubate two, create an incubator token with two plus one plus one counters on it that has to transform this artifact it transforms into an o Phyrexian artifact creature so yeah i got it right the so you're going to do this twice so you're going to get two of these tokens whereas with the last card you did it five times so you get five of those tokens but again, you do have to pay the two in order to actually turn it into a creature. It's just going to sit there otherwise. However, we have another ability here that says transform all incubator tokens you control. So that's pretty interesting. So now you don't have to pay the two. Of course, you can only choose one with this ability. So on the first ability, you can incubate twice and then you'd have to wait till the next combat. And you're not going to get any extra combats in Golgari Colors here. So you're going to have to probably wait to the next turn to then, you know, use this ability to flip them over. Mm, that's okay, I guess. Phyrexians you control gain first strike and death touch until end of turn. Um, hmm. Geez, none of these abilities are really that. That's five mana for this? Wow. I definitely think the last Glissa I like a lot better than this one. Uh, the original black green Glissa I also like better than this one. Yeah, so what are you going to do here? At the beginning of combat on your turn, right? Your first time you trigger this. Obviously, the transform all incubator tokens you're probably not going to do unless you have another way to be cranking out. I mean, obviously, they're going to have other stuff in this set that's going to be making those tokens. So it is possible that you have a bunch in play already and then you can transform them immediately once you cast your commander. I guess you could do that. It's not exactly, you know, mind-blowingly good, though, because they're just Phyrexian artifact creatures that are probably not very big. Giving all your tokens or your other Phyrexians first strike and death touch. That's pretty good. Um, you know, obviously you can give your commander first strike and death touch. That's really good. Other Glisses already have first strike and death touch stapled on them. So, you know, giving your commander because it's Phyrexian first strike and death touch is pretty good. I guess there's a couple ways you could go with this commander. You could, again, five actually seems like kind of a lot for this what you're getting here. You could just do Phyrexian Tribal and just every turn I'm giving my team First Strike and Death Touch. That's pretty good. We got a couple Phyrexian sort of tribal commanders already in this set, but if you wanted to make a black green version, this is a pretty, you know, giving your team First Strike and Death Touch is pretty good every turn. If you just want to do Phyrexian Tribal, there might be some pretty decent creatures out there that are Phyrexian where giving them First Strike and Death Touch is extra good. Like for example, if they have Trample, because First Strike, Death Touch, Trample is a fantastic combination. Um, just, you know, on, on my combat, I, I make two of those incubate tokens and then on the following combat, I can inc I can flip them over. And if I have any others, I can flip them over as well. It's okay. Not knocking my socks off. I, I definitely don't think this is going to be a popular one at all. I think probably both of the black green bl glisses that we already have are better than this one. All right. And lastly, today we have a new Quintorius as well. So, uh, digging into the Strixhaven commanders here. Quintorius Loremaster, three white and a red elephant cleric, three five has vigilance at the beginning of your end step. Again, end step trigger, that's good. So we're likely going to be able to use it as soon as we get our commander out. Exile target non-creature non-land card from your graveyard. 
So we are doing the graveyard theme in Boros colors, very different. Create a 3-2 red and white spirit creature token. It's weird that they don't say if you do create a 3-2 red and white spirit creature token. Hmm, that's interesting. Usually they say exile that card and if you do, you create this thing. It's just saying create this thing. Hmm. Pay one red and a white and tap. Sacrifice a spirit. Choose target card. Exiled with Contorius. Okay, that might be why they worded the, the ability a little bit differently. You may cast that card this turn without paying its mana cost. Wow. If that spell would be put into a graveyard, put it in the bottom of owner's library instead. Oh, wow. Okay, so they're putting it back on the bottom of your library. That could be interesting. So we need to sacrifice spirits here. Obviously, the, the last ability, I mean... Both abilities play into them each other. We got to fill our graveyard. Looting is going to be fantastic here, right? Faithless looting, all that good stuff. We're going to be wanting to do that a lot because you really want to fill your graveyard in order to take advantage of this commander. Um, I think probably I want to put a lot of spirits in this deck as well so that I don't have to rely on that first ability to use the second ability. So I can put, you know, there's obviously tons of spirits, you know, especially going back to Strixhaven. They had a spirit theme in red and white so it's very easy to do so obviously the original quintorius could very easily slot into this deck as well create you more spirits also gives you that that little bit of an anthem there so we want to choose a card exiled with quintorius right so we got lots of spirits in play that we can be sacrificing choose a card exiled with quintorius and again the the, the wording here is interesting right so you are exiling cards from your, your graveyard, non-creature, non-land. So we're not going to be able to cast creatures with this. However, there are lots of really powerful busted cards, of course, that aren't creatures. Instance and sorceries, mostly. I would say probably the sorceries are the big one. I can exile a insurrection from my graveyard and then pay this three sacrifice of spirit. And then I can cast that insurrection this turn without paying its mana cost. So... Pretty interesting. Again, you're doing the spirit tribal thing in, you know, Boros colors, which we don't really see. You're doing the exile. You're doing the the uh, sacrifice of spirit, all that kind of the graveyard stuff, which you don't normally see in, in, in Boros, except when we saw it in Strixhaven. So for that reason, you're going to have a lot of really unique things here. Obviously, you're going to have to revisit all of that Strixhaven stuff. You know, a lot of those cards weren't that great when they first came out because there wasn't a lot of support there. Now, I think that a lot of them have gotten a lot better. So certainly we're going to have to revisit a lot of that strict saving stuff in order to build this deck. Pretty interesting commander. All right, that is it for today. Five more commanders from March of the Machine. Gotten a lot of commanders already. A lot of really interesting things going on. There, there's so much to digest here. A lot of new things. A lot of things we've never seen before. Got all these transform commanders. These commanders that are pairing with each other. There, there's a lot. There's a lot to digest and... I'm going to have to probably do a couple of wrap-up videos when this whole set gets spoiled talking about all the different things that are going on. Let me know what you guys think of these new commanders in the comments below. But that is it for today, and thanks for tuning in. Mm -hmm.